Greetings, everyone. Great Bible Truths Day 58, a nation repents. Jonah chapter 1 and chapter 2, 1 through 2, as well as verses 9 through 10, and chapter 3, 1 through 10. So we're going to look at a few different sections from the story of Jonah, which kind of encapsulates the entire story. And we'll fill in a few details afterwards. So let's read it. It's rather short. Jonah flees from the Lord. So the Lord has told Jonah to go and preach repentance to the Ninevites, but he doesn't want to preach to them because he doesn't like them. They are, they're an enemy of Israel. Now Yahweh's word came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of Yahweh. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid its fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of Yahweh. But Yahweh sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty storm on the sea, so that the ship was likely to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God. They threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone down into the innermost parts of the ship, and he was laying down and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Maybe your God will notice us so that we won't perish. They all said to each other, Come, let us cast lots, so that we may know who is responsible for this evil that is on us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they asked him, Tell us, please, for whose cause this evil is on us? What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? Of what people are you? He said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear Yahweh, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then they were exceedingly afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of Yahweh, because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you, that the sea may be calm to us? For the sea grew more and more stormy. He said to them, Take me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will be calm for you, for I know that because of me, this great storm is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to get back to the land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more stormy against them. Therefore they cried to Yahweh and said, We beg you, Yahweh, we beg you, don't let us die for this man's life, and don't lay on us innocent blood. Yahweh, have done as you pleased. For you, Yahweh, have done as you please. So they took up to Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased its raging. And then the men feared Yahweh exceedingly, and they offered sacrifice to Yahweh and made vows. Yahweh prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So Jonah flees from the Lord here. The men determine it's him, basically because he tells them, but they still try, and they, they don't want to just throw him overboard. They, they try and save his life. They don't want to kill him. They try to row through the storm. But Jonah's like, you, you better just throw me over. I know why God's doing it. And they throw him over, and they praise God that he spared their life. Um, they understand God's power. But God is merciful to Jonah and sends a whale to swallow him to preserve his life because he would have died in the sea. Now, this might sound fantastic, right? A whale swallowing someone. Yet, not only do we see it in the Bible, therefore we know it's true, but we've seen or we've heard of these stories. We haven't seen it personally, but we've heard of these stories uh, several throughout history. So there's many, uh, I don't say many, but I think there's been uh, at least three in which a person had been swallowed by a whale, shot up, uh, spit out, and they come out looking all white and pale because of the stomach acids and all that. So point being is people have been swallowed by whales and have lived. But here we see that it's not just an accident or a uh, anomaly, but it's God behind the scenes causing the storm and the well to swallow people. Then Jonah prayed to Yahweh, 
his God out of the fish's belly. He said, I called because of my affliction to Yahweh. He answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol, I cried. He heard my voice. You heard my voice, but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that which I have vowed. Salvation belongs to Yahweh. Yahweh spoke to the fish, and it vomited out Jonah on the dry land. Now, now Jonah comes to the dry land, and he goes to Nineveh to preach a message. Yahweh's word came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I give you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to Yahweh's word. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three days journey. Jonah began into, or I'm sorry, a three days journey across, meaning it would take three days to travel across the city. It's so big. Uh, Jonah began to enter into the, the city a day's journey, and he cried out and said, Forty days, Nineveh will be overthrown. So he comes to Nineveh, walks for about a day, gets, you know, quarter, fourth of the way, about quarter of the way through, and you know, one third of the way through, and uh, basically tells them they, they, they need to repent. All right, so he's, it's a big city, but he's not even in the middle of it, but he's far enough in where he gives this message, probably at a town square, and you see the message is going to begin to spread. The people of Nineveh believe God, and they proclaimed a fast, and they put on sackcloth from their greatest even to their least. The news reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and took off his royal robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. This would be a sign of repentance. Uh, ash is a sign of repenting, and sackcloth is a, a sign of mourning. He made a proclamation and published it through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor animal nor, her, nor herd nor flock taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water, but let them be covered with sackcloth, both man and animal, and let them cry mighty to God. Yes, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who knows whether God will not turn and relent and turn away his fierce anger so that we might not perish. God saw their works and they turned from their evil way. God relented of the disaster which he said he would do to them and he didn't do it. So here we see the people turn, repent, they, they fast, they, they put on signs of mourning, uh, signs of repentance, acts of, of, of fasting of, of, of repentance, right? To, not just a, a sign of it, but they outwardly showed that they were sorrowful for their actions, understanding that God was going to judge them, and God did relent from the judgment that they deserve. So this is important to remember because God, we see, is sometimes people point the Old Testament as, as wrathful and the New Testament is gracious, but here we see a gracious act even in the Old Testament, even to people that weren't God's people. That's important to remember, as we'll see in the questions here. Why didn't Jonah's plan of escape work for him? That's our first question. Because the Lord had a purpose and plan for him that he was supposed to carry out, and he was trying to flee God's will. Point being, let us not run from God's will, because it's never going to work out good for us. Two, how do we know that God heard Jonah's prayer? Well, right after the prayer of Jonah, where Yahweh brings salvation, the, the well spits him up onto dry land pretty easy to see cause and effect there, right? Three, how did the king and his people respond to Jonah's message? They responded with sackcloth and ashes, with, with fasting and prayer and repentance. Four, explain how God's promise to Abraham that in you all nations will be blessed applies to Nineveh. Well, it, it shows that uh, the blessing of God to Abraham, even though they weren't descendants of Abraham, we see a descendant of of Abraham in Jonah going to preach repentance to the Ninevites, uh, which brought about the salvation or the saving of their city. Salvation being here in a, in a not in a spiritual sense. We, not, we, we don't know that every person was uh, saved and worshipped Yahweh, but salvation in the sense of they were, their life and their nation uh, was spared. And so we see there is a temporal blessing. There's also spiritual blessings that we see even these sailors, right? who uh, worshipped foreign gods turned to worship Yahweh after they saw the power of God there upon the sea. Great story. 
Hopefully you can apply it uh, to your life today. Have a blessed day.